Greece Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis says it will raise the issue of energy prices in the Balkans with the European Commission. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez arrives in China on a trip aimed at strengthening their commercial relationship. At least 50 people have died in northern Vietnam due to a days-long extreme weather event triggered by a powerful typhoon, state media reports. Typhoon Yagi is one of the worst typhoons to hit Vietnam in decades. It made landfall on Saturday with rains and 149 kilometre per hour winds. The typhoon, now weakened to a depression, triggered flooding and landslides across the Southeast Asian country, sweeping away infrastructure, housing and trees. Pope Francis has arrived in Timor-Leste, the third stop on his trip through Southeast Asia and Oceania. His visit comes on the heels of the 25th anniversary of the UN-backed referendum that paved the way for Timor-Leste's independence from Indonesia. Some 98% of the country's 1.3 million people are Catholic, making it the most Catholic country in the world outside the Vatican. Francis will celebrate a Mass on Tuesday with some 700,000 people expected to attend. A massive distortion in the electricity market between the southeast and west of Europe means energy prices are significantly more expensive in the Balkans. This was stressed by the Greek Prime Minister during a press conference, who said he would be raising the issue with the European Commission. <laughs> Έναν οδικό χάρτη. Οι Ελληνές πολίτες θα μπορούν να προσβλέπουν σε μια πολύ καλύτερη ζωή. Τις επόμενες μέρες θα αναδείξω το ζήτημα αυτό με μια επιστολή την οποία θα στείλω στην πρόεδρο της Ευρωπαϊκής Επιτροπής, την κυρία Βαντε Λάιεν, εξηγώντας ακριβώς το τι έγινε όχι μόνο στην Ελλάδα, στη Βουλγαρία, στη Ρουμανία, στην Ουγγαρία και πώς γίνεται να υπάρχουν ώρες της ημέρας όπου η οριακή τιμή του συστήματος να είναι 10 φορές ακριβότερη στα Βαλκάνια από ότι είναι στην Αυστρία ή στην Τσεχία. Κάτι δεν δουλεύει καλά. Δεν δουλεύει καλά στο ευρωπαϊκό μοντέλο. Δεν αναμένω ότι θα υπάρχουν άμεσε λύσει στο πρόβλημα αυτό, αλλά τουλάχιστον α ασχοληθεί κάποιο σοβαρά να το αναδείξουμε, ώστε να φροντίσουμε να μην έχουμε τέτοιε τρευλώσει ξανά στο μέλλον. Μιτσοτάκη admitted that the single energy market has not worked in recent months and that these distortions did not exist until last May. He also explained how Greece is currently exporting energy to Ukraine while they historically imported it. Αυτό τραβάει ενέργεια από το σύστημα, ανεβάζει τις τιμές. Δεν θα πληρώσει όμως ο Έλληνας καταναλωτής τις τρευλώσεις ενός ευρωπαϊκού μοντέλου. The Greek Prime Minister stressed that in the short term what his government has done and will continue to do so is impose taxes and fees on producers making what he described as sky-high profits. He noted that while the electricity producers are not doing anything illegal, they are exploiting a distortion in the system and set out plans to return these profits to the consumers. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has arrived in Beijing, the first stop of a trip to China which aims to strengthen the commercial relationship. Sánchez will be received by China's President Xi Jinping and will hold talks with the country's Prime Minister Li Qiang. He'll fly to Shanghai on Monday evening where he'll open the Spain-China business meeting on Tuesday. Sánchez's trip to China comes at a tricky time for relations between the European Union and the world's second largest economy. The EU imposed provisional tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles in July. The European Commission said that Chinese firms unfairly benefit from government subsidies, allowing them to keep their prices artificially low. That prompted Beijing to file a complaint with the World Trade Organization. And China's Commerce Ministry said it had launched an anti-dumping investigation into imports of pork products from the EU. Spain is Europe's largest pork exporter and in 2023 supplied China with around 22% of its imported pork, trade that's worth 1.2 billion euros. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer has met his Irish counterpart Simon Harris in Dublin in a visit described as a reset. Starmer's trip is the first by a British leader to Ireland in five years and is a further sign that the two wish to deepen relations on economic and security matters. 
you know, it's a pleasure to be here, to have this opportunity which we will take to renew the friendship between our countries. That reset, I think, can be meaningful. Starmer and Harris participated in a business roundtable to explore how renewed relations could benefit trade. The economic relationship is worth around 120 billion euros and supports thousands of jobs on both sides of the Irish Sea. Relations between the two countries have been strained since the UK voted in 2016 to withdraw from the European Union. That's affected political and trade structures of Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK. Residents in Maramures in northern Romania have been surveying the damage after a massive fire in the area was extinguished. Six warehouses have been reduced to ashes and entire orchards have been destroyed in the blaze that broke out on Saturday. Locals said the fire started suddenly and quickly intensified before spreading to houses. The Ministry of Internal Affairs said on Saturday that 90 people had been evacuated from the area. People said they'd tried to tackle the fire themselves to protect their homes until firefighters were able to reach the scene and put it out. More than 250 firefighters from Maramures and neighbouring counties were mobilised to extinguish the fire. The General Inspectorate for Emergency Situations believed the fire started on an area of dry vegetation and quickly got out of control. But authorities don't yet know how it started and have opened an investigation to determine the cause. Abdel Majid Taboun has been re-elected as President of Algeria. Preliminary results from the weekend show the incumbent leader considered the military's candidate won by a landslide. The 78-year-old garnered 94.7% of votes, despite questions over voting irregularities. This will be Taboon's second term as Algerian president, with his appointment unsurprising to many of Africa's largest country by mass. The first election that swept the leader to power was marred by boycotts and protests. Hundreds were evacuated after significant flooding at the famous Lord's Shrine in southern France. Local officials said that the evacuated included pilgrims and residents from nearby hotels and campsites. After heavy rainfall, a nearby river overflowed, causing water levels to rise about one metre deep in front of a grotto believed by some to be the place where the Virgin Mary appeared in 1858. Staff, volunteers and emergency services worked together to clear the flood water and reopen the sanctuary. As the Paralympic Games come to an end, Paris is hoping to leave its mark on how a disability is viewed and taken into consideration. These Paralympics set a multiple amount of records. Uh, the first one is that the highest number of delegations participated compared to previous editions, 169 to be exact. And then the second record that was set is that uh, this, these were the Paralympics that were the most covered uh, by international media. 165 TV channels followed the event and around 2.4 million tickets out of 2.5 uh, were sold. As a reminder, the highest record uh, of tickets for the Paralympic Games ever sold was in London in 2012. But what remains to be seen is whether uh, there will be a lasting uh, legacy when it comes to accessibility and social inclusion for people with disabilities. At the end of August, the president of the region, Valérie Précresse, uh, called for a massive renovation innovation uh, to fix the capital's centuries-old public transport system that is almost impossible for people with disabilities uh, to even access, a project that could take up to 20 years and cost 15 billion euros. And the feasibility of it has not even been discussed. Spanish director Pedro Almodovar has won the Golden Line for the best film at the 81st Venice Film Festival for his movie The Room Next Door. 
He received an almost 20-minute ovation when he collected his award for his first English language film. It stars Julianne Moore and Tilda Swinton and tells the story of two friends who rekindle their friendship only to discover that one has terminal cervical cancer. Almodovar, who dedicated the prize to his two stars, has previously called for greater access to euthanasia. Me siento muy ligado emocionalmente a este festival. Después he vuelto eh, más veces y siempre ha sido una experiencia muy, muy gratificante. The other big winners were Nicole Kidman, who walked off with the Volpe Cup for Best Actress for her role in Baby Girl. And Vincent Landon won the Best Actor Prize for The Quiet Sun.